Homeless. 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 The invisible man is the homeless person that keeps it a secret. There's safety in keeping it secret. There's comfort in keeping it secret. Los Angeles County has the largest number in the entire United States of homeless population. After parties and all that stuff. It's not in my house because they ain't one. <laughs> so. Lair, their home, is the most primordial and fundamental part of their lives. And to lose that is to lose yourself. And what happens the first day you lose it and not know where you're going to be that night, where you're going to put your head down to sleep. And if you even have a blanket, because sometimes I didn't. But, um, what happened? Stress. Stress kills. Now, stress, um, send me through, cause my body to go through anxieties. And when you never had anxiety before, and you don't know what it is, you go straight to the doctor. Oh, my heart is beating. You know what I'm saying? Like, somewhere on my heart. So, of course, the doctors, oh, you got a bad heart. Oh, you need this. So, you know, trusting in the doctors led to 15 pills a day, which led to 55 side effects, which led to tired, sick, inability. So, how did that happen? Drugs. And see, I was one of those ones who was. Always business minded. Drugs made money for me. But the only problem was is I was also using the drugs. So. There's safety in being invisible. There's comfort in being invisible. Perhaps these people, maybe you work with someone, go to school. Your children go to school with someone perhaps your grandchildren, but yet they're homeless. And what happens is, here in Los Angeles County, we have several affluent areas, Beverly Hills, Malibu, Pasadena, and so on and so forth. Yet, they have a homeless population, but they are not usually thought of in these areas, they're only thought of in Skid Row, downtown Los Angeles. When I was out in Malibu, I had a steady working job. At um, you lived in this place for 10 years? 10 years. Yeah. To Coast Highway? Yeah, I could walk to work. And you were uh, actually right across from the Acosta, La Costa Beach. Yeah. That's the private beach. Right across Malibu. from Aaron Spelling, Kansas Spelling's house. <laughs> oh, is that right? Yeah. Okay, and so when you had these problems, you became homeless in Malibu first. Yeah. And how long were you homeless in Malibu? A year. Tell us about that. Well, that was, that was, I, it was different because I knew everybody out there. Everybody, the wealthy people didn't know particularly that I was homeless or didn't care. And the guys, there's only a few guys out there, and they helped me. They were like my friends. They were my family. They were my buddies. One guy even saved my life when I was in a fire. He rescued me from a fire. I mean, these were dear people to me. And they, sh and, it, and at that point, it was hard, but it wasn't nearly like it is in the city. It's very different. Battle cancer. And one. And one. <clears throat> and then you became displaced. Displaced. Between apartments. Okay. <laughs> Refugees. Yeah. See, the word is very powerful, and it's a new word. 
but it's it's because it, when I was a kid that we didn't have that word. There wasn't a population of homeless people. There wasn't an emphasis on people. Now there's a whole lot of us out there. There's tent cities everywhere. There's more and more. So when you were growing up, uh, people chose to. We were hippies. We were yeah. kids. And then prior to that, it was hobos. Yeah, but we weren't frightened. Right. There was no fear attached to it. Now there, that word homeless is, basic connotation is fear. I either am one or I'm looking at one and I could be like them and therefore the grace of God. And there's a lot of people are even too afraid to be compassionate. And they've taken up a war. And gone to war. We are always choosing between fear and love. Always. That's our only choices in life. All the time. Moment to moment. Am I going to be afraid? Or am I going to be in God's love? That's it. That's the battle. And God doesn't want us to be in fear. I, uh, what is homeless to me personally? <laughs> um... I don't know, man. It, all right, I came out here from Philly. Oh, Johnny J. Burmore, by the way. Um, but uh, yeah, the, uh, producer, uh, rapper, writer, <laughs> TV producer, as far as music producer, that was both of those. Uh, it, it goes on and on and on and on and on. And everybody sees you and they're like, man, so you're doing all this dope stuff. What, what? <laughs> okay, so you're not on the street pushing a shopping cart and sleeping in the parks so nobody really knows you're homeless until you say the word yeah so how do you survive oh you survive like everybody else i mean there's 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 a presentation which is a big part of things because all right some people have that poor spirit as opposed to a broke spirit you know if you're poor then that's a, a mental state if you're broke, you, that's an economic state. You just ain't got no money. But there's people who are poor in their homelessness, and there's people who are just broke in their homelessness. So you could be broke in your homelessness and still be what they call balling. You can still make your appearances, and you know everybody mm -hmm. sees you as what you really are, which is yourself. You're just in a homeless state <laughs> and in a broke economic state. Or you could be exactly. poor in your homelessness. And then that's where you see the people with dreadlocks that just naturally dread it. <laughs> and that's where you get the guys with 20 coats on, you know, pushing the shopping cart. And you can tell it, that cat is homeless <laughs> because he's poor. He's in a poor middle state. Right. They should actually flip right. that, actually. Because poor should be an economic state and broke because you got to break <laughs> to go that route, man. Some people, they don't right. make it. A lot of people break. You can still so. be homeless and... Um take care of yourself, handle your business, home. Yeah. It's, it's, you just, life, it's just life, I would say, in my case, but I never lost faith, and it was a time of rest, restoration, and it's been like eight years. I went down there in 2008. My phone didn't ring for two years. You know, everybody talking, I didn't care. I had a peace of mind. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> but um, during that time, I was able to tap into other talents that God gave me. You know, I'm just not a hairstylist, but we were organizing a lot of things like, um, skill role artists everybody with skills and talents coming together your business then you had your home and you were a mother children all that was swallowed up like in like two weeks i remember praying like lord my teenagers are getting out of hand they're not listening and my body is not everything was just going crazy so within a couple of weeks, my whole life had just went, psh, seemed like it went down, but actually I guess you have to go down in order to go up. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been a journey and what a journey it was, you know, and I'm glad um, 
that I went that way. You know, because God have people everywhere. And if he has somewhere for you to go, you just got to go. Yeah, because most people consider the obvious homeless person, you know, in the park, on the street corner, you know, pushing a shopping cart. But a lot of people that personally knew you, that know you, never realized that you were homeless because you went to work, you functioned, but yet you were in transition. So they didn't understand about you being homeless. Well, it wasn't for them to understand because me, I didn't understand. <laughs> like, Lord, no, no, no. But that's where pride come in at. You know, like, I don't want people to know. Or it didn't matter because they wasn't come over here. You know what I'm saying? Or come stay over here. They was glad to see you down or they think you down, but you actually up. Yeah, because people are, basically you guys are invisible because nobody really knows what you're going through. They see you functioning, but they don't know that you are in the same state, but because circumstances, that's that's life what, happens. Life happens, and that's what everybody is. If you're too proud, I'm a per everybody has pride. Of course I was like, what the people going to say? What they going to think? But when it come down to it, it doesn't matter what the next person said, the next person think, because to me it's like God getting your attention, separating, separating, because when you got too many people around you, like I had, I'm thinking everybody was my friends, and you know, but yeah. when it goes down, yeah. you have none, and the Lord, he just wants you to see who's on you, who, who's really there for you, or who, you don't even have to have nobody there for you, you know what I'm saying, you just see people for who they really are, you know, they gonna talk, people gonna talk anyway, whether you're doing good, bad, happy, to me, I was never to the curb, you know what I'm saying, I was never dirty, I never went without a meal, I never slept on the curb, I slept in the car, but, like I said, I was in shelters. I was in the, you know, I stayed at most of y'all level. <laughs> Downtown, let's get real, but. In order to get these services, you had to leave Pasadena because they don't have a whole lot of things to offer. Right, I went to City Hall in Pasadena for homelessness. That's how I ended up in LA because they never had room at the shelter here. They had like, 12 beds for the females, 13 for the males. They need a URM, Union Rescue Mission, 24-7 in every city. That's my dream, my vision, you know, that I presented to city council for that. Because homelessness is everywhere. Don't send everybody to LA. You know what I'm saying? Like, these are still people and people, souls, souls belong to God and you gotta be careful how you treat the homeless. Yeah. Gotta be careful how you treat the homeless. I started with from New Orleans, which was maybe five years ago. I grew up here in Pasadena. Uh, I grew up in, with a, an affluent family. We had two homes, three homes actually. And uh, Due to a set of circumstances, I ended up homeless. Okay, a lot of it had to do with bad, bad planning. I see my way out of it. Uh, actually, I stopped living for me and started living for him. And uh, <laughs> it's uh, a miracle. But it's a miracle. But now I see what they mean when they say seek him first and all of the things he added to you, because I fell into. What I know now is my purpose, and my purpose is to serve him you know, with the gifts that he gave me, and I'm doing them. I'm having a ball doing it too. And just so happened, I got this opportunity to produce shows out of the media. Uh, maybe I should be advertising them, but they did get me on the road to doing it, 
They call me a producer, but really I'm just a facilitator for the Lord's Word. Uh, it's strange. When I got this, when this opportunity, matter of fact, you, you, were the one who gave me this, the door to open this opportunity. And I don't know if I should mention your name, but yeah, Sophia, you led me to that path in the media. Happy and immediate showed me a way that I could bless, that I could get my word about the Lord out in the form that I like to do it in. The form that I like to do it in is music. Okay, I like to praise the Lord singing a song. I wake up in the morning singing a song to Him. I guarantee to try this too. If you wake up in the morning singing a song, a happy song to Him, you're gonna have a great day. If you wake up, you know, if you wake up praising the Lord, you're gonna have a good day. So anyway, that's a whole other thing. That is the solution that I found. To getting out of this catastrophe, but in my see around me awakened the lion in me, and I know I wanted more of the lion in me, and uh, the more the lion in me, the more I want to know I, I I can't just sit around in complacency and not do something about, it, not say something about, it, not try to put forth whatever. So that's what I get an opportunity to do on my show. My show, I want to spotlight, may bring kind of spotlight things that need the spotlight shine them on things that are in the dark that people want to play like they don't see the things that people are in complacency about i want to get them up out of their seats cause them to do something about it if i if i can say something to inspire you and i want to so at any rate so community access the community in that instance helped you um to redirect your life help and me, get back help me in. to redirect my life and get it back on course and i wasn't doing it for me i was doing it because i wanted to be closer to him you know and as a result of that now i'm being tested and tried and all those things that you do you know come to you when you align yourself with him but i'm going through it still wearing the piece that he gave me but at the same time too like i said because i'm seeking him first I see in I see in the near future the blessings that he's gonna bring to me. So I know my homeless situation is only a matter of, of time and situation, it's a circumstance. It's not who I am. And they find themselves there, they know someone, they simply just need a friend. They need some kind of encouragement. So what, what this story is to say, no matter what the tragedy is, you can go inside because the answer is inside of you. The answer is deep inside, and you go inside, and you can do it. So perhaps you would draw strength from these individuals and their stories. It's very important that we hear these different stories to reach the ones that are invisible and know that they can get out of this uh, treadmill of life. Um, of. that there are solutions. You have to be pretty proactive to find out what they are. You know, you have to kind of push um, to see what's there. But, you know, when you constantly are being told it's hopeless by people who are your case managers, that was happening. It's been happening. And now that it's being opened up a little bit for people to have hope. Step in the right direction. Even if it's a tiny step in the right direction, it's a step in the right direction. Introducing the crown of glory, the of distinctive hair attachment as Yeah, yeah, sweet 
see building bridges every day i tried to be i tried to see hollywood from behind the scenes but i found somewhere deep underneath she's just a dream yo i tried to be So they forever live seven to my holes on the you would notice that weather shit.